everybody, welcome back to the Brotherhood of Gaming.com, the ultimate video game show, the best one in the entire world. Just ask me. I'm your host, William Morris. And I'm your co-host, Eugene Morris. Will you take that stupid costume off? You look ridiculous. Ugh, this guy. Anyway, Street Fighter has been around for over 30 years and has been one of Capcom's greatest cash cows. <sighs> This franchise has brought a ton of joy to gamers all over the world, not to mention introducing some of the most iconic characters in all of video game history. Now, we have had our fair share of criticisms of Capcom handling this franchise over the course of 30 years, what with the re-releases, and yeah, with 12 games being on this disc, it's kind of a weird, ironic combination of that. But at the end of the day, you can't argue with success. If they want it, make it, they will come. Which brings us to Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection. Also, one more thing before we begin. Even though we are big Street Fighter fans, we're not die-hard experts who are pixel perfect at any of this. So, just saying, you're not going to see us at any EVO tournaments anytime soon. So, this review is pretty much for the casual fan of Street Fighter. So, without further ado, let's dive in. So, what does this collection have to offer? Well, to put it simply, it attempts to be a celebration of the series lore. But unfortunately, we can't say that it's a complete one. The games featured in this package run from the original Street Fighter through the Street Fighter 3 series. So this game does not feature anything from Street Fighter 4 or Street Fighter 5. With the latter being an exclusive on the PlayStation 4, it is a little surprising that this came out for Xbox One users at all. In addition, several other titles were left out of the package altogether. Mainly, there is nothing here from the Street Fighter EX series. And most disappointingly, no Street Fighter the movie, the game from the Sega Saturn. Come on, it counts! I mean, come on, I want to play as Jean-Claude Van Damme! Where's the love? So while it is not a full rundown of every Street Fighter game out there, here are the games that are featured. Please note, we are not going to go into a complete detailed explanation of all of these games. That would get very monotonous, tedious, and borderline waste of everybody's time. So we will just give you a quick rundown of what is here. First, there is the original 1987 Street Fighter. This is awesome. Street Fighter 1 is pretty much a one-player game, but if you have two controllers, you can automatically go into two-player versus mode, with player number 1 as Ryu and player number 2 as Ken. In one player, you battle your way through some of the most generic fighters before facing off against Sagat. Now, is it a good game? Oh goodness no. Yet, there is a certain level of fun playing this game locally with a friend. Just the sight of the characters jumping all around and trying to do the special moves is just... I don't know, it's just enjoyable. And when you're able to perform a Hadouken, Dragon Punch, or Hurricane Kick, it is an event. And they can do some impressive damage. In fact, a game can end in about 15 seconds with a little bit of luck. As for everything else... Well, Ryu has red shoes, so there's that. Oh, and the announcer's voice. Not to mention the transporting behind your opponents and the knockout animations. Honestly, this game is good to have just for historical purposes. While it is not a good game, it is the soil in which the Street Fighter series would grow from. The Street Fighter 2 series is where this franchise first really came to life. The original Street Fighter 2 was a game that we played a great deal when we were younger. Renting this game from a game store on the weekend was a bit of a tradition. Along with the returning of Ryu and Ken, it introduced the rest of the more iconic Street Fighter characters. The base control scheme also got its start here as well, along with the trademark sound effects and music. The thing is, and I guess we were too young to see it back then, but man, this game is ungodly slow. But that would be rectified in later installments, oh believe me would it. Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition allows you to play with the original cast as well as the four boss characters, and with a little bit of some rebalancing. While Street Fighter 2 Hyper Fighting features a slightly faster speed and new moves for the fighters. 
We covered the 16-bit versions of these particular games a couple of years ago on our Sega vs. SNES episode, but like we said, these are the exact arcade ports, so these versions don't have to deal with things like bit-crushed sound effects. Super Street Fighter 2 was made by using a brand new hardware system which allowed for more colors and better sound effects. Each character got a bit of a facelift as well, and we saw the introduction of even more characters, and even more moves added to the original sets. Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo is really the magnum opus of the Street Fighter 2 series. It was the first in the series to have a super combo meter, air combos, and the ability to adjust the speed of the game. And of course, this was also the series debut of everybody's favorite, Akuma. Then we get to the Alpha series, which takes place between the events of Street Fighter 1 and 2. The graphics are redone in anime, which is our favorite look to these characters, as it really brings out more energy and flash. And there are more techniques added here, such as refined super combo meters and the ability to do alpha counters. This is also the game that brought in characters from the Final Fight games. Then comes Street Fighter Alpha 2, which really ends up making the first alpha game non-canon, as it completely refines and improves it. It seriously boots up the roster, is given a graphical update, and slight gameplay adjustments. Also, this game introduced us to Sakura, everyone's favorite skirt-wearing badass, and Akuma is available to play right out the gate. You know, I had this game on the Super Nintendo when I was younger. Well, I do have the Sega Saturn version, and it was undoubtedly the superior of the two. Can't argue with you there. Yeah, faster loading times and all that. Mm -hmm. Then we have the very popular Street Fighter Alpha 3, which has the biggest roster to that point of 28 characters. But more importantly was the introduction of isms, and ism is a variation of the play type for each character. Also another new feature is Guard Crush, allowing you to break through opponent's blocks after a time. But when talking about this game, you have to mention the awesome announcer, who is super into calling the action. The Street Fighter 3 series took place during a time that unfortunately we were kind of getting out of Street Fighter, I can't imagine why. So it is pretty cool to visit here in this collection. This sequel series to Street Fighter 2 kicks off with Street Fighter 3 The New Generation. This series introduced a whole new cast, which was led by Alex. Only Ken and Ryu returned for this one from the classics. The thing about the characters in the 3 series is that some of them are, <laughs> let's see, putting this delicate, uh, really way out there. Up to that point, the characters, with the exception of maybe Blanca, looked relatively realistic. But here, there are quite a few characters who look like they came from another planet. The game introduced super arts instead of super combos, and the ability to parry incoming attacks, which is a high risk, but a high reward concept. Afterwards, we have Street Fighter 3 Second Impact, which like Alpha 2 did to Alpha 1, completely rewrite the events of the first Street Fighter 3. This game also introduces personal actions that affects the gameplay for the characters. Grab defense that can allow you to make quick escapes from grabs, and EX specials, which are powerful versions of their special techniques. Oh, for Christ's sakes, urine, please put some pants on. We can see everything. Man leaves nothing to the imagination. Finally, there is Street Fighter Third Strike, which increases the roster and marks the return of Chun Li. The gameplay for the series is retained, but slightly altered, and it features the guard parry ability. The characters are rebalanced, and the gameplay has been sped up in this one too. And for the first time, when playing this game, you can choose between two opponents when you advance through arcade mode. And speaking of first, this game has grades after each performance in the fight. What the hell is this, an RPG? The big thing we love about the 3 series is the outstanding sprites in this game. They're just beautiful to look at, and are filled with so much personality. They are just great to look at. Also, the music has a more R&B hip-hop flavor to it, which you would think would not work, but here it really does, especially with that character select music. Now, as far as the presentation for 30th Anniversary, when you start up the game, you have four options. Offline, Online, Museum, and Options. In Offline, you can play Arcade, 
where you can play through the arcade mode of all the games in the collection. You have Versus, where you can play locally with a friend and training. Unfortunately, the training mode is only available for four games, which are Hyper Fighting, Super Turbo, Alpha 3, and Third Strike. With the training options, you can choose which stage to use and modify the actions for the training dummies. For the arcade mode, each game has its own set of options that you can use to select before begin playing. To be honest, the controls for all these games felt fine. Again, some of these games we have not played previously, so we are sure that there are more talented people out there that might be able to spot the differences between the versions here and the originals. When doing the movement in the game, you can either use the analog stick or the D-pad. Now, personally, we prefer using the analog stick because it felt a little easier on the thumbs, but uh, hey, preferences will vary. Bottom line is, either option's available. A nice feature is the ability to modify the look of the games. While in pause mode, you have the ability to choose three separate options. You can choose the original look of the game, which resembles the box screen from the original arcade games. You can select full to bring the top edges all the way up, which is what we like personally. And then you can go to the dreaded widescreen. Boo! The purists hate this as it does tend to stretch out the characters to meet the widescreen of your television. You can also modify the filters as well. One gives you an arcade look, another is an old television complete with lines, or you can just turn the filters off and go with it as is. Here in the pause menu is where you can also see the special moves from your characters as well. Now options mode of course has the standard stuff, you know, you can change the control layout settings, you can change the language, but it's the museum content that is actually really special. It is here where you can get a look at the background of Street Fighter. History gives you a timeline of events through the franchise, starting from Street Fighter 1 and going all the way up until the 30th anniversary collection that you're playing right now, as well as bios on the characters and music section for all of the games. And of course, the making of Street Fighter, which allows you to view the galleries of early concept arts. It's kind of a fun history lesson for the fans out there. Now we come to online. Oh boy, now this is the feature that really is gonna make or break this purchase for you. First, it is here that you see why there were only training options for these four games, as they are the only ones that you can play online. Here you have the option of playing online arcade, where you can play arcade mode while waiting for new challenges to show up and face off against you, and when the match is over, it takes you right back to the arcade. You can fight in a ranked match to move up the leaderboards, a casual match just for kicks, or you can join and create a lobby. For the lobbies, you first choose which of the four games you would like to compete in. The lobbies themselves can house up to four players. The first two will compete first, and if you're not one of them, you can choose to spectate and watch the action. When it is your turn, you and your opponent can choose which of the four games you want to play. And after the selection, the game itself makes the final decision. So for example, you may choose to play Third Strike while your opponent chooses Hyper Fighting. But then the game itself makes the selection and you end up playing Hyper Fighting. We feel that this is kind of odd because you may be in the mood to play one game, but then you lose a virtual game of Rock, Paper, Scissors and you end up playing the other one. I don't know, it's just a bit strange. Now when an online match happens, how is the netcode you may wonder? Now, as we have mentioned in previous reviews, we can only tell and show you our experience. When we first played games online, it was not good. There was a great deal of lag, as it looked like every match we were in was underwater. So what we did is that after looking up some advice on forums, we went to an online options and changed the input lag from the default 3 down to 0. Now upon doing this, the online matches went a lot better, at least to the point when it was more playable. But it was still not perfect, as we still had some issues every once in a while. So if you have or face someone that does have a bad connection, your online experience can be very spotty. So the final verdict on Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection, we can go ahead and say we give it a cautious recommendation. While the games have been converted pretty well here, and they are good and fun to play either solo or with a friend, the online experience seems pretty shaky at least at the writing of this review. The wonky online may be a deal breaker for some, and it's quite understandable. Hopefully Capcom will continue to address this, or others will have ways to work around it. 
Overall, we were happy with our purchase, as there is enough satisfying content here for Street Fighter fans like us. But it might not hurt to wait for a price drop on this one. But hey, that's just our two cents. I don't know, do what you want. Well, there you guys have it. That's our review of Street Fighter, the 30th anniversary collection. Are you guys into it? Are you Street Fighter fans or are you Tekken scrubs? Ooh, Ooh I'm not touching that. <laughs> <laughs> also, if you're interested in our opinion in other collections, like the upcoming Mega Man X one, please let us know. Definitely. In the meantime, you've been watching TheBrotherHoodGaming.com. Be sure to click that bell down there so you can become part of our notification squad so when we release a new video, you'll be hip to it. Meanwhile, I'm William Morris. And I'm Eugene Morris. And we'll see you next time.